All right, so if you did not know, I have switched away from using Portainer for using just regular Docker Compose files. I have it set up on a virtual machine. The serve R is my main kind of a Docker uh, server. Any Docker containers, mostly my kind of R application suite is all in there. And I want a good way to monitor it. Now there's ways that I've been doing it. You could use something like Uptime Kuma, which is great, it's beautiful. I've kind of switched away from using that to leaning more on Grafana dashboards. But those are, I don't wanna say cumbersome, but I just don't find myself actually going and viewing those dashboards as much as I would like to. So in this one, we are going to try out Bezel. This looks beautiful and it looks fairly easy to set up. You can see lightweight, simple, as Docker and Podman status, gives you alerts, multi-user, and a bunch of stuff. And we can see a preview there, looking good. So we're gonna go ahead and try it out. Now, if I go over to the guide, you can see under getting started, there is a few ways to go about this. We have a Docker Compose right here that we can just go ahead and drop on in. It includes that and the agent. But what I am going to do, I want to have a separate Docker or um, Proxmox LXC that manages kind of the front end of this. So we are gonna go over here and I was kind of browsing around, but let's go to bezel, bezel right there. And I'm just gonna install it this way. Now, if you don't have Proxmox, you can just run the Docker container. Um, it's as simple as if I go to hub installation here, you could do just a straight Docker run command if that's easier for you, or you could do a binary installation here as well. But I am gonna just drop this helper script right into my PVE shell. And for this, honestly, using the default settings, uh, no. Let's go advanced. I like to select everything. Unprivileged, give ourselves the root password. Container ID is gonna be 07. Let's up this to a staggering 16 gigs of storage. Two CPU cores, up the RAM just a little bit. The bridge is fine. We want DHCP, auto, and all of this we can just leave as is. No, no, and yes. And no, we'll, we'll skip the configuration file for now. I haven't really dived into that as of yet. So we're just gonna give this a minute to start up. We'll log into the dashboard, create our account, and then I'm gonna set up the agent on my uh, Docker virtual machine right here. So it looks like we're gonna be at one or tw 227 at the port. So if I go back to getting started, 8090. So let's go here at 80, 90, and there we go. So let's go ahead and create our first account. Just a real simple email password and we are in. And if we look over here, you can see it's all done. So what we're going to do now is add our first machine. So you can see no systems found. Let's go ahead and zoom on in a bit so we can see it a little bit better. And let's click add system. So we have a few options. We could do this with Docker or binary. Uh, we're going to give it a name. This is going to be my serve R and this is going to be at 200. Now to actually run the agent, you can click copy Docker compose right here. Or if I drop this down, we can copy a Docker run, which I think I'm going to do for this particular instance. So if I go over here and drop that on in, we can get some more information on exactly what's going on. So network mode host, we got the Docker sock here. It looks like it's gonna create a local file, which I'm in my home directory, so that's gonna be fine for the agent data. Uh, we have our keys here, we have our listen, port, the token, and our hub URL. Everything looks good. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And it's running. Sorry, it didn't give me any feedback the first time I ran the command. So let's hit add system, see if we have any issues. We have serve our right there and there we go. It's up. So awesome. Now, if I go over here, we can see the CPU usage, memory utilization, the disk usage of this VM. We have GPU here, which it has an Intel pass through, but I believe in the documentation, if we go under GPU monitoring, they don't have Intel monitoring as of yet, but they might use Intel GPU top soon which is going to be super cool when they go ahead and do that. But if I head back over to our dashboard, we have the agent version, we have network monitoring, so quite a bit going on here. 
and we could pause, edit, copy the host name, all that, or go ahead and jump back into it. So here, if I change this, oh, it goes up to 12 hours. It's gonna see if I can make it shorter so we can see these graphs a little better. But you can see here all the different containers that I'm running. We have Qubit Torrent, Plex, Health, um, Loon Health, all that. We have our Docker memory usage with all of these. Looks like Qubit Torrent is using quite a bit. So that's something I might look into. And my question is on here. Oh, there it is, alerts. So we should be able to set up alerts as well. Oh, it's probably right here. There we go. So here we can set up alerts for uh, high CPU usage, high disk usage. Uh, we set it up for this specific uh, system or all systems. So if I go like CPU usage, if it exceeds 80%, let's go ahead and get some kind of notification for that and set up temperature. So if it exceeds 80, that's good. And memory usage, maybe if it exceeds, cause we got some ZFS on here. So if we go above 95, uh, I should probably look into it. So yeah, that looks good. Close that out. Overall, this seems like a real nice tool. We could throw all of our systems in here, monitor just about everything. Now I wonder, let's go back to the documentation and go to the agent installation. Can we do this without Docker? So Docker or Podman, binary. So Linux installation script. So I don't know if this is gonna be best practice. It goes into a temp directory but let's see if I could throw my entire Proxmox on here. So I'm in my shell and let's paste in this command right here. So hit enter and enter our SSH key. So let's head over and create a new system. This is going to be Proxmox and Proxmox is at uh, 212. So 10 0 0 212. And we get our public key here. Give that a copy and drop it on in. So hit enter, automatically enable updates. Sure. It didn't ask me for my token, which is weird. Maybe it just worked without the token. Let's add system, see if it shows up. Oh, there it is. It's up. Nice. Now, um, okay, so for memory usage, if it doesn't detect Docker containers or probably the Docker sock, it will just go with full utilization using 10. 10 gigabytes there, looking good. So now if I go here, we can see Proxmox and Servar. And we have all of our RAM usage. Overall, this looks pretty good. I do like it. We do have some temp info with the Proxmox since I installed it directly on the system and it's not a virtual machine, so it does have a temperature to report. So that's nice. And yeah, with all that, I will go ahead and link to the documentation, everything I used in this video. If you have Proxmox, you can just kind of follow exactly along with what I did. Or if you just have a Linux machine, you can use kind of the same installation script that I threw on the Proxmox host. There's Docker, there's ways to go about it. You could check out their uh, getting started in their documentation to get everything going. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good Bye.